Good morning, everyone. It's June 12th. I'm Angelica Alvarez. And I'm meteorologist Josh Down. Welcome to WMBD 31 News this morning. It's a major spring storm to talk about. This low pressure system's already caused several tornadoes down here in Texas and Oklahoma, and this is tracking our way. So by this afternoon, we could actually see severe weather. Well, Josh, I'm going to blame the weather for my inability to speak today because it's been such a crazy weather day out there. At least you're not blaming the weather man, right? <laughs> not yet. 77 in Kiwani, you got to love that. 81 here in Galesburg, 81 in Macomb, 75 in Pontiac, 75 in Bloomington. Remember, the stretch along I-55 cooler because those storms took place. Now they're all plowing eastward and out of our area. Good morning, everyone. I'm meteorologist Josh Film live at O'Brien Field for opening day of baseball. Okay, Angelica, movie stars might have a lot of money, but that doesn't mean it's always easy finding the right gift. <laughs> Here's entertainment correspondent Brooke Anderson with your Hollywood Minute. I think Pekin was trying to simulate Venice, Italy because of all the water in the streets here. They could get a gondola and go down the streets, unfortunately, with all the rain they received. Good morning, everyone. I'm meteorologist Josh Stone, and this is March Madness Weekend. It was the night before Christmas, and all through central Illinois, not a creature was stirring, including all the little girls and little boys. Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm not oh that was a week <laughs> Oh, <laughs> That was bad. <laughs> it's over. Game over. Broken I'm nail, out. Lisa. Jeez. <laughs> All right, our temperatures are going to be very chilly this weekend. We could see some uh, light flurries on Sunday, but how about the 40s by next week? All right, let's, let's try it again. I want to redeem myself. Right, no, I broke the I'm nail. I'm going to get hit behind Eye for an eye, tooth it. for a tooth. No, I don't we'll want to break a nail. <laughs> we'll see. Don't want to hurt our ankles. We interrupt this program to bring you a severe weather update have some severe storms to talk about. One is in McDonough County. We have a, a line of very intense storms moving here. When you see a bow like this on the radar map, that means very intense winds. In fact, there's already been a report in McDonough County of 60 mile per hour winds coming out of these storms. You're watching the MBD TV. Now weather with meteorologist Josh Stone. Well, it was a beautiful day in central Illinois. I mean, really unseasonably cool temperatures. And you went running today, right? I did. And, and you loved every minute of I it, I bet. Did. I did. It's much easier when it's cooler and not so humid. It's a natural air conditioning, especially when, what, what are we, in June or are we in October? I can't remember. I'm having trouble <laughs> deciphering that. But yeah, I mean, temperatures today were in the lower to mid-70s, officially in Peoria, a high of 76. And we did see some scattered showers around the area. In fact, one little cell right here went right through Canton and passed I-72, and that was it. But pretty much everyone saw mostly cloudy skies. Now, the clouds shielded us from the sun, so the sun wasn't able to get in here and heat the ground up to uh, more normal-like temperatures. And also, those northwesterly winds were coming down and cooling us down, so that's why we only saw temperatures in the 70s today. Right now, we're looking at mostly cloudy to partly cloudy skies, and then as we get to uh, the midnight hour and after that into early tomorrow morning, then the clouds will start to break apart and we'll see mostly clear conditions. Okay, what happened on this date back in 1976? For those of you who are around, do you remember? Well, we had a violent tornado that ripped through Peoria County and destroyed a farm and a couple of houses near Dunlop. So uh, pretty violent weather on that date, but uh, not violent for us today. Just pretty much a, a calm day, relatively speaking. 56 right now in Air National Falls. Their temperature in northern Minnesota could actually get down to the lower to mid 40s. So unbelievable. Right now it is 71 degrees in St. Louis, 63. We're getting a little bit of lake breeze here in Chicago. But we are seeing a trough on top of us, but this will slowly edge out of the area, and then the heat will return by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Like I said, high pressure system. We're in the front of it, so actually we're going to remain in the 70s tomorrow. But once that pulls eastward, then we're going to be in the back side of it and the return flow will come in from the south and southwest. Those winds will be coming up from the south southwest to bring us some warm air. Right now it's 65 degrees in Peoria with a northerly wind at seven, so the winds have died down from earlier. In fact, some wind gusts were over 20 miles per hour earlier this afternoon. 68 degrees in Bloomington Normal, northwesterly winds at 12. Other temperatures right now, 64 in Henry at 70 in Canton, 70 degrees in Beardstown. So actually a pretty cool but comfortable evening for a Sunday night. The northerly winds, remember transporting some cooler and drier air into the area, but notice the winds shift as that high pressure I talked about shifts eastward and then return flow around it will bring those winds up from the south to help warm things up. So once again, mostly cloudy skies tonight, maybe a few scattered showers in the area, but for the most part, it's just going to be light stuff. Okay, I want you to play a game with me. We talked about low pressures bringing clouds and storms. Well, where's the high pressure system on this map? I'm going to step out of the way. Where do you think it is? Well, if you guessed right around here, 
You are correct. Here it is. High pressure system is going to come in. You can see no clouds associated with it. And we're going to see clear skies through uh, Wednesday. And then actually Wednesday night we could see some thunderstorms that could be on the strong side. 55 to 58 for our lows for tonight. Clearing after midnight. And 78 to 82 for our high is tomorrow with plenty of sunshine for you. And here we go with our outlook. As you can see, at least three days of sunshine. And then the clouds start to increase by Wednesday afternoon. And then thunderstorms take place as that front slides into the area on Wednesday night into Thursday. And the 4th of July, mostly cloudy skies, but I took out any showers to plague the area. So we should be fine with our fireworks. All right. Thanks for looking out for us, Josh. Okay. Right. <laughs> Coming up next, the 2000. Our severe weather guy tells you to plan, practice, monitor, and act. No one knows this better than Bob Parsons at Parsons Manufacturing Company, where his plan, countless practice, and monitoring and acting helped save over 200 lives in the summer of 2004. That is just amazing. It was on July 13, 2004, when an F4 tornado with winds over 200 miles per hour formed in Woodford County. It collided with Parsons Manufacturing Plant, leveling the entire facility. Miraculously, all 200 employees survived due to Bob Parsons' proactive approach. I was raised in the country on a farm, and I, I, you know, seen, you know, other tornadoes and devastation around. 35 years ago, Parsons experienced a storm when he worked in a building across the street from the plant's current location. It was a huge storm, and it knocked all the windows out, and luckily the building survived. And it, it, it pretty well went right across where this facility now sets. That was quite, a, quite an experience. I'm in the inside in the hallway. And I often said to myself, where would we go in the event a tornado would actually hit this facility? When Parsons expanded his facility, he built storm shelters, which turned out to be a lifesaver for his employees. Praise needs to go to Bob for building the shelters, because without the shelters, there's no doubt we would have had some critical injuries. Kevin Coulter is the safety director of Parsons Manufacturing and insists that tornado drills are a necessity. Everybody always assumes that drills take a long time away from production. It only takes us about three to four minutes maximum. A lot of people, when there's tornado uh, drills, they're, you know, you're kind of slow to act. Take them all seriously because you just never know. You can end up like what happened to us. If it wasn't for Bob's forethought in, in putting these up, a lot of these people wouldn't be here. The Roanoke tornado wasn't the only devastating tornado in 2004. In April of that year, nine people were killed by a tornado in Utica, which is just outside our viewing area. 